This week, over 180 employers journeyed to the Mill Conference Center over the course of three days to partake in the annual Mississippi State University Career Expo. A former Mississippi State baseball star is going to be on the biggest stage in football this weekend, officiating the Super Bowl in Las Vegas, Nevada. We hear from him about what it means to be selected for this role. Mississippi State Baseball hosted their inaugural Home Run Derby Tuesday. This comes after the event was canceled last year due to inclement weather. We hear from current students who showed up swinging for the fences of Duty Noble Field. Welcome to Take 30 News. I'm Chris Doherty. And I'm Megan Gordon. This semester's career fair rolled into Starkfield this week. Amy Sellers has more on what makes the event unique. This week, MSU hosted its annual career expo at the Mill. The three-day event is the largest career fair on campus for students. At MSU, students flooded the Mill in hopes of making connections that will hopefully lead to jobs after graduation. I appreciate Mississippi State University putting on the Career Expo so that I had the opportunity to meet with future employers and make connections. The Expo does not cater to only students though. It is open to all MSU alumni as well. Those attending the Expo can not only find full-time employment opportunities, but also internships, co-ops, and part-time jobs. The Expo is broken down into three separate dates, one for engineering and technical students, one for business students, and one geared towards any major. Over 180 employers signed up for the event, ranging from the Air Force to Community Bank to even Waffle House. I appreciate Missy State allowing me to make connections that I would not have made without the Career Expo. They allowed me to make a special connection with one particular company that I feel like I will be hearing from them. Luckily for students, this will not be the last event that the Career Fair will host this year. Students who are interested in the coming events that the Career Center will host or those who want to see what all the Career Center has to offer can visit the Career Center website at career.msstate.edu. Live from the DMC, I'm Amy Sellers. Thanks, Amy. Now, uh, Jacob Woods, what do you have for us about the weather? Yeah, guys, it's a pretty comfortable day out there right now. Temperatures settled in the upper half of the 60s, taking a live look from atop Bryant-Denny Stadium. I'm sorry, not Bryant-Denny Stadium, from... Uh, Davis Wade Stadium, we are seeing some pretty overcast skies. Dew point of 61 means we've got a lot of moisture out there and we've got even a few rain showers to deal with as well. Those are going to become more frequent going into the evening and overnight hours, especially for the weekend, but we'll time out those rain chances and have a look for the week ahead in just a little bit. Awesome, thanks Jacob. The 102-year-old Perry Cafeteria has been serving students for more than half of Mississippi State's lifetime. However, the original 1921 cafeteria will soon go under renovations to update the interiors and add additional dining options. In a statement released by Mississippi State University, the school said that the new Perry Hall will have three dining options and an expanded Starbucks location, as well as an expanded Moe's and State Found Bakery on the North End. This construction means part of the North End is already closed and the whole Perry will close at the end of the semester and will not open again until the fall of 2025. Some students across campus are already ready to accept these new changes. I'm excited actually. I love going to the bakery. I love sushi. Um, so, and I think it's just better to just have more options because you kind of get tired of eating the same thing every day pretty much. The university did not release a definitive timeline as to when the construction will be completed. The Sanderson Center is set to begin renovations to the second floor beginning March 1st. According to the Reflector, these renovations will be the first major renovation to the center since its opening in 1998. The upstairs area will become an open area for fitness. The plan will bring updated fitness equipment and less outdated space, such as racquetball courts. There are also plans for more climbing activities. The renovations are set to be completed by the upcoming fall semester. Science Night at the Museum will be Saturday, February 10th in front of Hillbun Hall. The free event will have the science demonstrations and hands-on activities for all ages. These will be alongside walkthroughs of the Dunn Sealer and Lewis Dowell Museums, followed by the movie showings in Harden Hall. No, 
You don't have to play football to be on the field for Sunday's Super Bowl. A former Mississippi State pitcher will use his arm to throw flags instead of balls. Take 30's Luke Freeman explains. Reporting here from Las Vegas, Nevada, home of Super Bowl 58, the Chiefs will be playing the 49ers. The Chiefs have two Mississippi State players, but we are still guaranteed to have at least one alumni with the Super Bowl ring. We got to the talk with Brad Freeman, one of the Super Bowl officials. What being assigned to the Super Bowl means to me, it's it's just, it really hadn't hit me yet. Because um, when, when you start out at this thing, you know, I, I can remember back in uh, Mississippi working my first middle school game and barely knowing even the mechanics and the positioning. And then to kind of look um, and you get that call and it says, hey, congratulations, you will be working the Super Bowl. Freeman's first season in the NFL was in 2014, where he got to referee a game with his father, Steve. This will be his first time officiating the Super Bowl. Freeman played baseball for Mississippi State from 1995 to 1998. We asked what advice he had for anyone who wants to become an official. So I would just encourage someone who's looking to become an NFL official, just start. And then once you start, be the best at where you're at. Every game is important. It doesn't matter if it's middle school or up into the Super Bowl. Every game is important. And you got to treat it that way. And you got to, you know, service the teams that are playing in, your, in that game. Service them well. Um, have great communication. Talk with players. Talk with coaches. Really communicate. Freeman says he's just going to try and treat it like any other game. With Take 30 News, I'm Luke Freeman. All of us will be cheering in Stark Vegas and looking forward to seeing one of our own in Las Vegas at the big game. Mississippi State's so baseball the team hosted their home run do to derby Tuesday. We'll take a look at what happened after the break. Depending on where their ball. As concern grows over the declining health of the world's oceans, veterinary students at Mississippi State are learning how to rescue and rehabilitate vulnerable marine animals. Through a unique partnership between the College of Veterinary Medicine and the Institute of Marine Mammal Studies in Gulfport, Mississippi, students are experiencing the chance of a lifetime. Real-time research of this fragile ecosystem prepares students for a future in providing care for sick and stranded dolphins, turtles, sea lions, and other marine species. At the same time, MSU's advanced diagnostic technology is helping innovate for solutions while improving treatment and outcomes. Not only are the waters of the Gulf Coast opening new worlds of discovery for Mississippi State veterinary students, they are much safer now, thanks to this game-changing partnership that's improving life for literally hundreds of aquatic animals. Welcome back. The Student Association will hold elections next week and candidates are beginning their campaigns. Tuesday, the students at MSU will choose their new student association team of leadership. Presidential candidates have taken to the drill field to share their campaign promises by handing out stickers and buttons. Voting will be held over Cowbell Connect and the winners will begin their duties March 24th. Tuesday, MSU's Lyceum Series hosted a performance of Cross That River, a story of a black cowboy. The musical is about a black man's journey to the Wild West. The Lyceum Series' next show will feature the Hip Lit Ballerinas, a group of dancers mixing the art of ballet and hip hop. The Chicago Dance Group will perform in Bettersworth Auditorium at Lee Hall, February 29th. Tickets are online at msstate.universitytickets.com. It isn't every day that an average student gets to step onto an SEC diamond, but the Mississippi State Baseball Program hosted an event that allowed MSU students to do just that and more. Aubrey Carter has more on why MSU students were so eager to get inside. Hundreds of students lined up in front of the gates of Duty Noble Field Tuesday night for their chance at hitting a home run at the annual Student Home Run Derby. Any MSU student was allowed to participate as long as they signed a waiver before getting on the field. Those who had the skills to hit the ball into the outfield were able to receive between 500 and 2,000 Hale State rewards points depending on where their ball landed. The first 1,000 students who arrived at the Home Run Derby were able to snag a free t-shirt just like this one. Due to inclement weather, last year's Home Run Derby was canceled. 
So this year, students were excited to get out there and take a few swings. I'm hoping to uh, miss one and then everyone uh, make fun of me and then me hit another one really far and then everyone go ooh or ah. That's, that'd be the best thing possible. However, other students were quite anxious to step up to the plate. I'm pretty nervous because I'm scared. <laughs> it's been years since I played. But some people were simply there for moral support and to cheer on their friends. Uh, I'm the bat boy. Uh, I've, uh, yeah, I've been uh, deemed the bat boy the minute I got here. So, yeah, I'll just be here to watch for the most part. After getting their five seconds of fame and five chances to hit the ball, students picked up their free t-shirt and sat in the stands to watch their peers try to swing for the fences. The opportunity to hit a baseball on Mississippi State's beloved Duty Noble Field is one that some students will cherish forever. It was really fun. It's something I never thought I'd be able to do, something I'll probably never be able to do again, so I'm glad I got to take advantage of it. For Take 30 News, I'm Aubrey Carter. Personally, nobody was able to home run this time. However, Mississippi State Baseball's program has plans to continue the tradition of the annual student home run derby. From Stark Vegas to Las Vegas, Dan Abril has more for us on former Bulldog and Starkville High School standout Willie Gay Jr. Starkville legend Willie Gay and the Kansas City Chiefs take on the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 58. Gay is Willie a Starkville Gay native a and as we found out, he means a lot more to this city. Willie Gay did a little bit of everything for Starkville High School. He was enrolled there from 2013 to 2016 and played football for all four years. After his electric high school career, his college decision was pretty easy. I decided like two nights ago to stay in state because uh, um, I felt more comfortable with it. Uh, it was hard for me to say no to LSU in Michigan, but uh, I had to make a big boy decision and that's what it came down to. Willie has always had Starkville on his mind. After he and the Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year, he came home and read a Dr. Seuss book to kids at his old elementary school after he answered any and all of their questions they had about what he does for work. Over the past 11 years of Willie Gay's football career, he has been nothing but an exemplary player and more importantly, a great man. He has single-handedly put Starkville High School on the map and is the most recent Mississippi State Bulldog to win a Super Bowl, and he has the chance this weekend to put himself in an even smaller category by helping his team win another. On the field, Willie is one of the fastest players at his position, and he is constantly making plays. Off the field, he is a humble 25-year-old from central Mississippi who loves his hometown and loves himself some Dr. Seuss. With Take 30 News, I'm Dan Eberly. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Find out later with what, the crew, what our crew thinks. My money's on the Chiefs. Thanks, Dan. Coming up next, what to expect going into your weekend. Jacob Woods lets us know what the weather will be like after the break. Discovery. It tells our history and determines our future. At Mississippi State University, we're digging deep, unlocking an understanding of our past, validating it, Middle East exploration by faculty and students is uncovering evidence that unravels ancient mysteries. Scholars have long thought of the biblical kings David and Solomon as mythological figures. Our research offers evidence that supports their existence, boosting MSU into an international league of experts on archaeology. Now we're changing the way people think about the past opening up new possibilities of understanding for future generations. Digging deeper, learning more. When it comes to making the world a better place, it's all in the numbers at Mississippi State University. Our big data science researchers are creating astonishing new algorithms to model human behavior and consumer activity to identify anomalous purchasing patterns, Interpreting the data creates heat maps that can signal fraudulent activity and even predict likely cybercrime locations and perpetrators. And as the only academic institution to team with a state-level DHS agency in the study of transactional data of the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, MSU is helping prevent misuse while ensuring that benefits are being used as intended. These successes are opening doors for similar research partnerships with banking, insurance, 
credit card, and other data-intensive industries, leading to consumer confidence in online and other transactions. Making numbers count. Mississippi State University. Good afternoon, guys. Campus Connect meteorologist Jacob Woods taking a live look from our uh, state capitol. We uh, have a current view with temperatures in the upper half of the 60s, lower 70s, and we are expecting uh, showers to continue to push through the region over the next several hours and expecting temperatures to remain in the upper half of the 60s going into this evening. And we can also expect um, pretty dry conditions as we go throughout the rest of this evening. Yeah, there we go. In the upper 60s right now, <clears throat> eventually falling into the 50s as we go later on into the afternoon. Staying dry though, if you rain showers are out there as well. So if you've got plans to be out and about, may just need the light rain jacket. Like I mentioned, a few of these rain showers pushing through just north of us across portions of Clay and Monroe County, just north of Highway 82 here. So staying dry for right now in Starkville, but like I mentioned, can't rule out an isolated shower going throughout the rest of this evening. Here's a bigger picture showing the frontal system located just to our northwest, that area of low pressure in eastern Kansas, and it will eventually turn into a stationary front as it sags southward closer towards our neck of the woods. And that means that once it stalls out, several waves of rain are going to develop along it and continue to push through our neck of the woods as we go into the upcoming weekend. So here's that high temperature for tomorrow, 69 with rain developing. I think most of our Saturday will be dry with just mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures comfortably in the middle to upper 60s. As we go into Saturday evening and overnight, that's when I think the most notable chance for rain and widespread rain chances will develop across the region. On Sunday, expecting temperatures to be a little bit cooler in the mid 60s and a little drier than Saturday, at least in the morning hours, but expecting another wave of rain to develop as we go into Sunday night and early Monday. Looking at the uh, temperatures throughout the next seven days, though, we're expecting temperatures to remain quite cool. That average of 57. Notice we've been well above average the last several days. It's felt mild and warm relatively for the early to middle part of February here in northeast Mississippi. But as we go into Monday, notice that cold front, that stationary front I was talking about bringing us all those rain chances throughout the weekend. It turns into a cold front and eventually passes through on early Monday morning. But Monday's the coldest day of the week, and even then it's only a degree shy of that average of 57. As we work our way into the rest of your work week, temperatures kind of stair climbing back into the middle 60s and we are going to have plenty of sunshine to accompany that as well. So the weekend's pretty much a washout. Temperatures are at least warm, so it's not gonna be a very cold rain. Expecting those temperatures to remain in the 60s, both during the daylight hours, but just 50s overnight, so still even mild waking up. Monday, just a 30% chance of rain there in the first half of the day, and then temperatures will be cooling off on Tuesday and Wednesday, finally starting to get mild as we get into the upcoming weekend. We'll have sports after this, stay with us. Imagining the built environment of tomorrow is a collaborative dream at the College of Architecture, Art, and Design at Mississippi State University. Learning is experienced in a studio environment that brings architecture, interior design, and building construction students together to solve 21st century challenges. One of only two such programs in the country, MSU's curriculum creates a 360-degree approach, an opportunity for learning how to work together in the real world, and encourages creativity and cooperation for resolving tomorrow's issues, such as housing for continued population growth, work and life environments for expanding urban lifestyles, and accommodating industrial and technology shifts. Working together gives students a better understanding of the intersection of design and construction, and allows for the kind of creative thinking and practical application that leads to a better future for all. When it comes to making the world a better place, it's all in the numbers at Mississippi State University. Our big data science researchers are creating astonishing new algorithms to model human behavior and consumer activity to identify anomalous purchasing patterns. Interpreting the data creates heat maps that can signal fraudulent activity and even predict likely cybercrime locations and perpetrators. And as the only academic institution to team with a state-level DHS agency in the study of transactional data of the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, MSU is helping prevent misuse while ensuring that benefits are being used as intended. 
These successes are opening doors for similar research partnerships with banking, insurance, credit card, and other data-intensive industries, leading to consumer confidence in online and other transactions. Making numbers count. Mississippi State University. Welcome back to Take 30. I'm Eli Wilson, and this is Sports. Our Elizabeth King recaps the men's basketball late-night win over Georgia Wednesday. Thanks, Eli. Mississippi State stopped its two-game skid with a 75-62 victory over Georgia on Wednesday night. Sean Jones Jr. making his second start of the season for the injured DJ Jeffries. First points of the game come from freshman Josh Hubbard at the free throw line. 9.57 first half, Shaq Moore for three. Home Bulldogs up 36-28 at the half. Second half underway, Cam Matthews with the dish, Tolu Smith with a backwards finish. He's got moves. Keyshawn Murphy sidestep in the bucket in his first game since early January. Here's what head coach Chris Jans you know, had to Keyshawn say. Keyshawn obviously gave us a big boost on the offensive end. He made four of our 25 <laughs> baskets. He obviously is very talented. We've been talking about him since uh, you know we've arrived. 5.30 left, who else but Hubbard for three. Smith with the tough take. He seals the deal on a layup and the dogs win again. Mississippi State will look to get its first SEC road win against Missouri on Saturday. Cassidy Lambert has the Mississippi State women's basketball game against Georgia Tuesday. Mississippi State women's basketball faced Georgia on Tuesday and secured a win, marking their fifth straight win with a score of 76-57. After beginning SEC play 0-2, the Bulldogs have won seven of their last eight and are 20 and five overall and seven and three in conference play. And I've got a, a special group and it has to go all the way from the freshman to the fifth year. They all came here for this vision and this vision is real. It is, it is. And we got to stay hungry. To show support for not only the Lady Bulldogs, but also the breast cancer patients and survivors, fans are decked out in pink. Senior guard, Jerkayla Jordan, led the Bulldogs with 19 points and added nine rebounds, four steals, and four blocks in 33 minutes. Mississippi State managed to outscore Georgia in all four quarters. It was truly a battle of the dogs. The 19-point margin win is the largest for Mississippi State's conference play. So our focus was just um, finding the sweet spots, going into like the middle area and just playing power ball with, you know, we have bigs like Jessica Carter and Aaron Barnum and then obviously shooters like Lauren and Debrisha and uh, D that can knock it down. So just finding the sweet spots and just slowing it down when we get in there and just being patient and poised. Sunday, the Bulldogs will go for their sixth win in a row. Um, thanks, Cassidy. Uh, starting Friday next week, Mississippi State men's basketball, uh, men's baseball uh, begins their First series versus Air Force. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in that one? Man, you know what? The one thing about the baseball team, they're a bunch of dogs, like we say, right? They got Dakota Jordan, they got Amani Larry, just a bunch yep. of guys that know how to swing the bat. When you got a guy like Dakota Jordan coming off an incredible season, home run power, I mean, what's not to love about the team this year? You know, I think, I think Hunter Hines might have something to say about that. Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think we got one guy who's got that home run power. But, you know, I don't know if you noticed, softball, all their games, they moved to Saturday for their uh, tournament coming up this weekend. So, uh, yeah, with I the weather see. coming in Sunday. So, who do you think, uh, who do you think takes that weekend series? Uh, I'm going to go Mississippi State probably wins most of the games. I know they're doing the snowball tournament for Alex Wilcox in memory of her. And uh, who do you think's got, who you think, who you got in baseball? Baseball, mm, I mean, I'm not one to, uh, I'm not one to doubt, but I think we're 3 0 -ing. I think we're 3 0 yep. Air Force. We're going to come out hot. So. Paul, Paul Skeens came from Air Force. You Paul know. Skeens might have came from Air Force, but they don't know about Dakota Jordan, I'll tell you that. So. All right, and that's all we have for sports today. We'll be back after the break. The sense of place. We all have it. Often grown from deep roots in small town communities. At Mississippi State University, our Carl Small Town Center is strengthening these ties. With nearly 40 years of making a difference, we're revitalizing communities into welcoming places to work, live, and congregate. By weaving together the best pieces of our past with modern technology and amenities, we're creating the hometowns of the future. Places where lifetime memories can be made, where you have all the things you need, along with all the things you want. 
Through partnerships with our communities, we're identifying improvement opportunities, recommending paths forward, and creating the plans for a better tomorrow. The world lost a great star this past Monday. Country singer Toby Keith died peacefully surrounded by his family after a two-year battle with stage four stomach cancer. Keith was most known for his patriotic songs, especially after 9-11. He is also known for his hit, I Should Have Been a Cowboy, which went triple platinum. In happier news, Super Bowl's coming up. What do you guys think? Now, I'll tell you what, Christian McCaffrey, that guy's a certified dog. Uh, give me the 49ers. Give me the 49ers. That's all I got to say about that. I got to say, I'll, I'll be cheering for the hometown guy, Willie Gay, Chris Jones. Who you got? I still wish the Ravens were just in the Super Bowl. I'm still kind of salty from a few weeks ago, to be honest. I'm not rooting for anybody. <laughs> Who you got? I got the 49ers, actually. Yeah. I'm a Taylor Swift fan, but I really believe the 49ers are going to take the win. Um, us as a crew voted. We have nine votes for the 49ers and five votes for the Chiefs. Um, There's a lot of controversy in the uh, news news uh, newsroom for that. But um, just uh, can I get Jacob if you can give us a little quick uh, little yeah. Let's uh, throw it over to uh, the seven day forecast just real fast. We are going to deal with some rain chances throughout the entire weekend. A good weekend to just stay inside. But if we had to pick a time with the heaviest rain, it looks like Saturday night, early Sunday morning. Once again, Sunday night, early Monday. Finally drying out for the week ahead, but cooler temperatures back in the 50s and then 30s overnight. So back to maybe the winter coat as we get into the middle of next week. Perfect. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not too good with the cold, so I'll be bundled up. I can promise you that much. I can promise <laughs> you that much. Uh, I think we'll be, we'll be having a good, uh, good weather for the baseball games coming baseball up. Baseball games so Friday. So, I mean, that's the only thing you can Since hope 63, for, right? I think it'll be pretty good. To be good at least it's weather. a warm rain. Yeah, it's better <laughs> than a cold rain. But yeah, nobody definitely. Likes it could be a lot worse. <laughs> rain is not the move there. But uh, thank you guys for joining us today with uh, Take 3 News. I'm Chris Doherty. I'm Megan Gordon. And I'm Jacob Woods. And I'm Eli Wilson. Good night, folks. <laughs>